how is it possible that you have somebody over here saying you need to be a carnivore, eat animal protein for every meal, every day of your life, and that's how you improve your health? while somebody else is over here saying, you should never eat animal protein, you need to be a vegan, and that is the only way that a human can express health. And then of course, there's dozens of versions in between, those are just two extremes, but how could we have so many different human diets? Everybody seems to be fully invested that they're absolutely correct about this is the right diet for you. Either they're all right, or they're all wrong, or there's some other answer in between. These people are 100% committed to the fact that they're right, and dozens, if not hundreds, if not thousands of people are following all of these different diets, and they're getting results, at least for a period of time. And so, how is that possible? Is it that there's just the one right diet for each person, and we need to do every diet in order to figure that out? Or is it because any of these diets would have worked anyway, and we just need to pick one and stick with it? If you've gone through this journey or you've tried different diets and you've seen different results from different diets or you've been on a diet for a really long time and you're noticing yourself that actually you did have some benefits at first, but they've really started to plateau. Well, there are very good reasons for why that happens and that is what I wanna cover in this video. So what this video is really about is diet variation and how diet variation needs to be viewed through what we're calling the hormetic lens. I beg you, please watch the first video which really gives you a very firm and broad understanding of what hormesis is, what stress is, how stress affects your body, how to understand stress's effect on hormesis. In video two, we went through how do we view exercise through the hormetic lens, which is a really easy to understand concept of using stress and hormesis and then gauging and guiding somebody's exercise program through the hormetic lens, taking us to now this third video, which is viewing diet also through the hormetic lens. But that background information would be critical for you to really understand and participate in this conversation on diet variation and using the hormetic lens to view diet and understand how diet is stressful and how to manipulate our diet to continually improve our health over the long haul. So what do I mean by diet variation? Literally that, diet variation, varied diet, why? Why are we talking about this? Again, going back to video two, which was on exercise. If you did the exact same exercise every day of your life for the rest of your life, you would start to see four to six, maybe eight weeks of benefit, followed by another eight to 12 or 16 weeks of plateau. And believe it or not, even if you continue to do that exercise day in and day out, your fitness levels will actually start to decline because our bodies are designed to become as efficient as possible doing any task we ask it to do. And so we have to create constant and never ending varied exercise programs in order to keep exercise under the hormetic curve and keep benefiting from exercise for decades and decades to come. Believe it or not, diet is exactly the same. We need to continually adapt, modify, and change our diet at least a few times a year in order to continually benefit and build our health over decades and decades to come. Let me give you some examples. Most likely, everybody watching this video knows somebody. They were diagnosed with a very terrible disease or illness. One of the strategies that they went to was changing their diet. They changed their diet, and whether or not they were cured, they certainly probably saw great changes in their health as a result of changing their diet. So I think everybody would agree that changing their diet probably from, let's say, a standard American diet into something more healthy and more specific created some sort of shift in their body that allowed their body to start to heal. What's interesting, though, about that is one of those people may have gone carnivore and they're only eating you know, eggs and steaks and chicken. They're only eating animal protein and they got certain health benefits from that. Somebody else either with the same or a different illness, it really doesn't matter. They went vegan. They eliminated animal protein completely. They're eating only organic fruits and vegetables and juicing. And they also saw maybe the same types of improved changes or benefits in their health. So why did that happen? And why did two completely different diets make very similar changes? Well, there's a few reasons for that. Number one is the original diet was probably unhealthy. I think most of you would agree. There are 
tons of problems with the standard American diet, some of which include high levels of inflammation, enormous amounts of unhealthy fats, too much sugar, too much processing, lots of toxicity and chemicals and pesticides, even heavy metals, all different kinds of issues, just consuming the average food that's just easily consumable out there in America. Then they made a very specific change to their diet, which helped them express new levels of health. Was that because they got rid of some of those inflammatory processing and chemicals and you know, a lot of the different issues in terms of other ingredients that might be found in our food? Sure. Is it also because they created a stress on their system? Back to hormesis, we're now talking about using diet to create those stressors to shift that hormetic curve to improve somebody's health. So if we created a big stressor in their body, but one that they could heal from, could that alone have also contributed to those improved benefits in terms of their health? Of course. And I think you've all seen this too. Once you have that person, they were diagnosed with the illness, they changed their diet, they followed a very specific program, they saw tons of benefits. Now they think you should do that change too. Then they become a huge advocate for that diet and everybody they know and love needs to be on that diet in order to get that same benefit. Now, is that true and could they benefit from it? Of course. Could you benefit from making that same change? Of course. But what I'm trying to say here is that it's not that simple. And what I'm also trying to say here is any one of those folks who had that experience, which is a great experience to have, also shouldn't be following that exact same diet indefinitely for the rest of their life, the exact same way they have, if they want to see their health improve for the rest of their life too. So back to the hormetic curve, right? We understand that stressors are going to shift this curve. So when the person was eating a standard American diet, I'm sure that was also very stressful. They then shifted, let's just use carnivore as an example, they then shifted to a carnivore diet, which then pushed them above that radar and started to help their body need to adapt and change to that new diet. If we stayed a carnivore diet then for years and years to come, again, just like exercise, we no longer challenge the system. The benefits of that program start to decline and they start to drop back down to that threshold line where they're no longer getting the benefits of hormesis. And we can say that that's true for virtually every diet that we have. And so what I'm trying to advocate for is that most of these diets are great. Are there benefits to being a vegan? Absolutely. Are there benefits to being carnivore? Absolutely. The research supports both of those. But are there also benefits to the Mediterranean diet, the South Beach diet, the ketogenic diet? Well, of course. And so what I'm trying to explain is there's a lot of different diets out there. And in the end, what's most important is that we learn how to challenge our body using food. I'm naming certain diets, but we don't have to follow certain diets, but we have to vary our food intake, at least in terms of quality and quantity and even timing, which we'll talk about in another video, in order to keep challenging our system and keep our health improving. One way to create that type of challenge could be to do something like following a seasonal diet. Let's say I live in the Northeast of the US and I wanted to eat seasonally. What does that mean? Well, what that means is as the spring starts to come in, we start getting some of the big leafy green vegetables starting to pop. So we get some of the spinach and the lettuces, right? Which then turns into some of the other fruits and vegetables as we get into the mid and late spring. Into the summer, we start to get all the different fruit coming. Then we start getting gourds and root vegetables as we get into the fall. As we get into the late fall, a lot of those start dying off and we get back into just the leafy greens. As we get into the winter, really there's nothing that's just naturally growing. And all that's really left might be the animals that are living in the area. And so now the diet becomes much heavier in animal protein and animal fat as we get deep into the winter. And as we cycle back into the spring, we start getting some of the leafy greens growing again. Now that's just one version, but if you understood that version, what you can say is, well, I'm starting to eat like a vegetarian, lots of fruit and vegetables in the spring into the summer. What's interesting about fruits and vegetables is that they're also increasing carbohydrate content as we get deeper and deeper into the seasons. So late summer into the fall, if you looked at carbohydrate content of the root vegetables and gourds versus broccoli and the leafy greens, 
you would see that carbohydrate intake massively increases in the fall and late fall as compared to the spring and midsummer. And so as a result, we're eating primarily carbohydrates, which is what vegetables and fruit are, and we're increasing our level of carbohydrate as we get deeper and deeper into the fall, preparing us for the winter. What does that mean? Well, we're probably going to convert a lot of that carbohydrate into fat because as we get into the winter and we're eating primarily animal protein and animal fat, we're likely to be in ketosis. And in ketosis, we're going to be burning a large amount of that stored fat from the fall that we got from the excess carbohydrates in the gourds and root vegetables that we were eating leading up to the winter. And now we're in ketosis, we're eating primarily uh, animal protein and animal fat, we're burning ketones when there's nothing available, we're doing some fasting, and that gets us all the way through the dead of the winter back into spring where carbohydrate intake starts to build up again. But if you really understood the physiology of that process, you would see that those are literally three different diets that somebody's going through just by following the seasons. The fact that we can now go to your grocery store and you could literally buy anything you want, anytime you want it. You could buy apples in July, you can buy meat in August, you could buy blueberries in February. I mean, you could literally buy anything you want, whenever you want, and now we're in the habit of just eating whatever we like. But what I said on the last video is, if I go to the gym left to my own devices, I'm likely to just to do the things I like to do and avoid the things I don't like to do. Well, diet is the same way. You're gonna tend to eat the things you like to eat, and you're gonna tend to avoid the things you don't love to eat. Even if you're trying to expand your health, you're avoiding things that might be really building a much more robust and strong digestive system, immune system, promoting the health long-term if you're not creating some type of diet variation over the course of a year. There are other ways to do it. Following the seasons is just one, but you could also just pick diets. You could say, listen, for the next three or four months, I'm gonna be a vegan. When I finish that, I'm not gonna just transition from vegan, let's say, to carnivore. That would be a pretty dramatic shift but I'll start adding other whole foods and then I'll start adding animal proteins back in. And then I'll work my way into something that's like paleo-ish, right? And then from paleo, I'll work into carnivore. And then from carnivore, I'll work back into paleo. And then from paleo, I'll start working back into some of these other foods. And then I'll start going back into a vegetarian, which then vet, you know, back into a vegan. You can create these cycles and what I'm telling you is without these cycles, and if you're eating the same thing every day, day in and day out, you're really not benefiting from food the way you ought to or the way that you could. And so the goal is to create diet variation. Diet variation is what stimulates the hormetic curve, similar to varied exercise. Varied diet will not allow your body to get lazy, will allow the food that you're eating, provided that is healthy food that you're eating, and it'll keep challenging your body in different ways, promoting your health for the rest of your life, which is what most of us are really looking for. So exercise variation, diet variation, and in the next few videos, we're gonna continue to cover this concept. How do we use some of the modalities and some of the treatments that we all like to use in our life and exactly the same process, look at them through that hormetic lens and understand how to modify and manipulate them to continually benefit from them long-term. The way I'm explaining this is to follow some sort of like specific schedule, like the seasons or, you know, every few months and you just get into a rhythm. All of that works. And a lot of people sort of need that structure and scheduling in order to do it. You could also not do it so strategically. It could be relatively random. You could say, hey, I'm really feeling like I've been eating way too much animal protein. I'm going to shift this way for a while. Hey, you know what? I haven't had animal protein in a really long time. I'm going to shift back this way. So you could go by how you feel. You could go by a very specific schedule. At the end of the day, I don't know that that matters as much as the fact that you keep creating variation over time. So we'll see you next video and we'll get into all the details of other therapies in those videos coming up. Thanks for your time and attention. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time.